friends uh, i invite all of you to join me in applauding dr roy chowdhury's wonderful talk it's been sheer joy listening to him it has certainly uh, made us understand this phenomenon called god particle a little more not that we understand much but uh, one thing we certainly uh, understood and that is the power of human thought it's a tribute to the power of human thought it's also a tribute to what he said at the beginning to international cooperation in in the quest for the fundamental truths of or the fundamental building blocks of our universe nothing like this has ever happened in human history scientists from practically every country in the world working collaboratively and with amazing perseverance and finally the beast has been found it's a very beautiful beast and the way he explained it and that is really you know he's not just a scientist but a science popularizer so thank you very much dr ai choudhury uh, you know spenta asked a question at the beginning or rather he uh, articulated a question that he had probably heard at uh, the tifr uh, uh, why orf has organized this you know orf normally is concerned with social issues uh, friends i can only answer this by saying that uh, my own Uh, friendship and close association with spenta began in the late 70s when we both became members of an organization called people science movement i was studying at iit pawai he was at tifr people science science for the people science for a better society science is not some abstract uh, purposeless pursuit all this that dr roy choudhury described is one we want to know why the universe was created how it was created the brahmand as well as the anu but it is not knowledge for knowledge sake of course gnan is a virtue a value in itself but it contributes to making the world a better place as spenta said the you know in his introduction more than 100 years ago when electron was discovered hardly anybody knew that it would be the building block of so many things including computing so who knows as dr roy choudhury said a few hundred years from now the discovery of higgs boson is going to make our world a better place in so many different ways and that is the purpose of science and uh, he has he has made us understand this this great quest not that each one of us has uh, you know got a hang of all the technicalities but when scientists like him interact with people like us uh, it uh, it adds to the overall knowledge in society science cannot and should not belong only to scientists the entire society should develop a scientific temper 
And this, in our own very small way, ORF attempts to do by organizing talks like these. Uh, friends, I don't know why Lena asked me to, uh, you know, do the honors of speaking at the end. Maybe because I happen to be here today. I spend uh, more time in Delhi and I'm hardly here. But there is another reason uh, that I think uh, I'm somewhat qualified to give these uh, closing remarks. Uh, and that is in my capacity as a columnist. You know, four years ago, when the Large Hadron Collider experiment began, I had, and it had created, uh, you know, similar excitement. Of course, not as much as now. And I had, I had written a, a column in the Indian Express, and it was, it was titled of Gandhi and God Particle. And all of you might wonder what's the connection between Gandhi and God Particle. So let me just read out uh, two paras from that, that column that I wrote four years ago. Why is the Higgs boson called God Particle? I do not know. But isn't it an acknowledgement that science's search for the basic truth about our universe is its way of searching for God? Of course, truth and God manifest in million different ways and the quest has engaged great minds from every field of human endeavor. Science, spirituality, art, literature, even politics. And, you know, I, most of my time is now in politics, but I think that uh, there are many politicians who are in politics in search of the meaning of God. Hmm? Here I'm reminded about one of the most extraordinary conversations about truth and God that took place some eight decades ago near Geneva, not far from the place where God particle experiment is being conducted. It was between Mahatma Gandhi and Romerola, the French writer who won the 1915 Nobel Prize for Literature. In December 1931, while returning from the second round table conference in London, Gandhiji visited Geneva and spent five days as a guest of Rola. An ardent friend of India, Rola had written the Mahatma's biography in 1924, introducing his philosophy of truth and nonviolence to a strife torn Europe. Of course, Rola had also written two great books on Ramakrishna Paramahamsa and Swami Vivekananda. Rola's villa overlooking a lake, a valley by the Rhone River and glaciers of the Alps was an abode of serenity. There in between his morning and evening prayers and his daily routine of spinning the charkha, Gandhiji would, sweat, uh, Gandhi would, Gandhiji would sit with Rola each day for two or three hours of philosophical conversation Two seekers, common search for truth that is almost as much of a landmark in mankind's history as last week's particle collider experiment. Gandhiji spoke of his experiences and described how he passed from his first definition of God, that is God is love, to God is truth, and finally to truth is God. Friends, I ended my column with this paragraph, and that, ha that again has something to do with what uh, Dr. Rai Chaudhary said. Today, the Europe that has come together to conduct the greatest scientific experiment in human history, in which scientists from the rest of the world are also collaborating, is a far cry from the Europe that fought two world wars in the last century. In some ways, this peaceful and cooperative search for nature's secrets is a realization of the shared vision of Gandhiji and Romerola as they met, meditated, listened to Beethoven and bhajans, talked philosophy and politics, and 
peering into the meaning of truth and God, affirm their faith in a better future for mankind. So, truth and God can be approached from a hundred different directions. This is one of them. But they all, all these directions converge at one point. Call it God, call it truth. And there's a very interesting uh, formulation by Gandhiji who says that uh, some people may not believe in God. And he says, I respect them. But nobody can say that they disbelieve in truth. No scientist who is an atheist can say that he disbelieves in truth. Hmm? And therefore, Gandhiji in this conversation, and I consider this as one of the most, uh, one of the most illuminating conversations on the meaning of God and truth, Gandhiji says that I have come to the conclusion that truth is God. So, thank you very much, friends, uh, for this opportunity. And uh, in my own small way, I have uh, uh, I have tried to study this whole uh, this whole question of what Gandhiji stood for what his experiments with truth. You know, he calls his autobiography, my experiments with truth. Hmm? What all this is about in my own book, which is going to come out next month, and uh, pardon me if uh, I'm doing some pre-publicity for my book. Uh, it's, it's called Music of the Spinning Wheel, Mahatma Gandhi's Manifesto for the Internet Age. And uh, among other things, it, uh, delves into you know, the conversation between Gandhiji and Einstein, how Gandhiji was uh, deeply scientific in everything, that he did, in everything that he did. And I can end my concluding remarks by saying that uh, you know, he would have been overjoyed at the discovery of God particle. Thank you very much. <laughs>